Welcome sentient beings from all known universes and beyond. It's time to activate your cranial downlinks and prepare to receive a raft of discussion on a cosmic ocean of science fiction and fantasy topics, interviews with local area genre devotees, and insightful prognostication by our soothsayers of science fiction, our forecasters of fantasy, and any other beings that happen to get caught in our gravity well. This is the Galactic Driftwood Podcast. Happy holidays, everyone, and uh, welcome to this episode of the Galactic Driftwood Podcast. I'm Bill. I'm Linda. I'm Charles. I'm Seth. (laughs) (laughs) You went in. We went in a perfect line today. I thought it would go to Chris next. (laughs) No, it's it's always. always I know it's always you, but I got there was a line and (laughs) be quiet. We record in the morning, everyone. So there's Chris too. All right. There's Chris. So there's Jenna and this is Chris. I didn't hear Jenna say anything. So I said Seth was talking over me. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, here we go. It's gonna be well, one of those everybody. Back. Welcome to the Galactic Driftwood Podcast. Right. Right. But this is us. We're organized. Right. Yeah. I swear. None of us have ADHD. Yeah, if you want to see us more organized, check out one of our after dark episodes. <laughs> Actually, I think we are more organized with the After Dark episodes because we're so excited and not just waking up in the morning. Good point. <laughs> Good point. Right. Well, we're, uh, what, less than a week away from uh, Christmas. Happy and, uh, holidays. Uh, we kind of go around the horn here and see what everybody's asking Santa for or what they're hoping to open up under the tree or if they had... The resources, well, let's not say of Elon Musk, but let's, oh. say, let's <laughs> say you were comfortably well to do. Um, what would you be asking Santa for? What, whoa, well, that, those are two completely different things. Oh, yeah. More of the question. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, let's start with what you're asking Santa for realistically. So realistic. well, uh, realistically, if we're going to say we realistically, we then you can't say that and have realistically in the same. <laughs> so let's say okay. sub one thousand dollars. Uh you can't put limits on there because mine are way above that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> let's say under ten thousand. Don't even put a price on it. Let's just okay, go through the wish list. Yeah, it's a wish right, list. And then we're just Here's back that. to saying I want Twitter for Christmas. <laughs> Maybe you do. I mean, I can't do much of a worse job. The, this is true. This is also true. <laughs> so you want your own company so you can lay people off? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Twitter's going to fix it. Yeah. Oh, fix it. Is yeah. that what that is? Right. <laughs> no. we'll, At least... we'll, we'll break it down then. If if uh, if you could have anything with a limited amount of money, what would the one or two things be? Like if you had a wish list that just, you know, yeah. take money out of the picture, what, what maybe would it be? Oh, I can do that. All right. Oh, I'll go reason. first. Okay. Unlimited re- unlimited resources to travel the world like every couple of months for a couple of weeks, but not having to worry about bills. Or mm. COVID. Like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that goes back to your, your ridiculous luck bill. True. <laughs> right. Well, okay, so that sounds cool. Now, what are you asking Santa for for real? Uh, Santa, no. Santa, aka Aaron, is getting me some exercise equipment so I don't have to feel so pressured to try and get to the gym with the baby. Good idea. Uh, Yay! There you go. Oh, nice. Practical. He's the uh, man. Yes. Right. It's it's more of uh, let's keep Jenna sane. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. All right. Well, let's uh, jump up to Charles. <laughs> I just want well. <laughs> I've got kids I'm buying for, so I just want the Amazon purchases to show on time. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, let's, let's Charles, let me ask. Let me ask. Oh, but 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 if I had infinite resources, I don't. Gee, just not the answer to work would be enough for me. But, oh God, yeah. yeah, to be able to retire that that would be your Christmas wish. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, with a little extra cash, of course, but yeah, sure. 
And, uh, well, let me and, ask your your reason for the Amazon question. Are you a <laughs> Christmas gifting procrastinator? Do you wait till the last minute to buy? You wait till the last minute to buy? No, I wouldn't say it was that. The 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 wish list came late this year. Oh, well, that's uh, not your fault. That's yeah, yeah. It was hard to get to. Well, it's all video games and iPhones now. So, <laughs> kids, they just they all want the same thing now. They do. Unlimited, all right, well, let's, uh, let's jump down to Seth. All right. Uh, oh yeah, I can't share a screen. I was gonna show you guys. Uh, I was gonna say for Seth, you probably want everyone to fulfill, uh, fulfill a commitment <laughs> to an RPG date. You can share, uh, Jenna. It's uh, these wishes have to be within the realm of possibility. <laughs> <laughs> you can share a screen, Seth. Consistent uh, gaming schedule oh, with can. my friends. Yeah, just share it oh, and then we'll awesome. share it. All right. Uh, just share it and so then we'll throw it up in the. I'm gonna do my what we're asking Santa for first. Uh, Ooh. What's so that? this is. This is uh, Wormwood's new Kickstarter for fancy dice and fancy vaults. Oh, take my money. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to be getting this one. And Katie, or my wife, is going to be getting this one. Fancy. This is our, this is oh. our Christmas present to each other. Uh, nice. Beyond that, I'm also hoping to get some D&D source books and... Yeah, you know, that's pr pretty much going to be my Christmas is hopefully D and D stuff. What about your Black Friday hunter acquisition? Does that count? No, that doesn't count. That's business now. <laughs> <laughs> that's that wasn't a present. That was extra work. Well, tell us, tell everyone what you got, because there's uh, probably some three D printing enthusiasts out there that might be curious. So. Well, I'm going to have to talk over Pixel because he's now yelling at me. That's, that's the background. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, so after showing everyone the artifact uh, from the previous episode, uh, I took that to a party over at Bill and Linda's place and Got like, orders. three people told me that they'd pay $80 for one. And I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to sell these, I got to get a new printer. So I <laughs> got... <laughs> No, literally, they take three days to print. If I want to make any amount of them, I have to have another printer. <laughs> I'm planning to oh, try wow. going to some maker fairs and having a little booth. Nice. I think it'll that'll be that part will be fun. Setting up the printer isn't. Uh, I bought uh, any cubic Cobra Neo. Uh, it's just a nice entry size uh, printer and uh, not too big. Fits right in the space I have for it, and it should be able to put put out a full size pot. Nice. Have you started printing them already? Uh, no, I'm still calibrating the new one, and I'm trying to fix uh, fix the leveling issues that the old one has. Because uh, I was no. trying to, yeah, uh, in printing more of the test pots. I found uh, leveling issues that I need to resolve to mm. properly do some of some of the materials I'm wanting to make them out of beyond that color change filament. Can you make statues out of that, like little cool statues out of the color change filament, or does it not work as well? Oh, I absolutely can. It <clears throat> it actually doesn't work as well, but I made these cute little uh, Christmas trees. I gave one to Linda. Um, oh my god, they're so cute. It's this little Christmas tree made out of that color shifting filament, and when you it's lift it up, little, little legs come out, and then you can have it stand on the little legs. Nice. <laughs> They're adorable. Uh, as for my what I would get with no uh, with no price limitations, it would probably involve a little bit of home renovation because I would get. Uh, Wormwood's prophecy gaming table, <laughs> and then uh, whatever I needed to do to make a real fan get a real fancy TV screen insert for it. Uh, basically, do a lot of what Bill's done with his <laughs> gaming setup and his far better resources. <laughs> I'll, I'll show a video of that here. Yeah. 
But yeah, I would do what Bill has done, but take it like three steps further. Fair. Uh, and I would really like a room would be set up with video so we could tape uh, and all sorts of stuff. Like my that would be my beyond the pale thing that I would do is just make the best D and D room that can handle everyone comfortably has enough plugins for everyone, screens, music or speakers built in that I can put music out to and sound effects. Cameras everywhere so you can live stream it to the internet. Yeah. <laughs> all the things. Nice. All the, all the stuff. For their money. Yep. And then I would retire and never work again. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hopefully Santa was listening. All right. Let's uh, jump up to Linda Lou. Okay. Well, we'll start with the practical. Um, I would or I'm getting myself for Christmas. I mean, Bill's getting me. <laughs> <laughs> this. Oh. Oh. What? It's the uh, Pixel Watch. What, the new seven watch or whatever is it? Or oh no, it's the Pixel one. Pixel the... Watch. I don't know that I'm. I'm keen on the round face though. I, think I, I might get you a rectangular one. I don't remember asking you for any. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember asking <laughs> your opinion. <laughs> this is mine, 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 all mine. Uh, and as far as if I were to shoot the moon and had unlimited funds, I would take Bill and we would go up in space. Ooh, okay. that's a good one. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. Go for a little space ride. Well, you Who's just got to make, make good with uh, Jeff Bezos, and maybe he'll yeah. take you up on his uh, penis ship. Well, see, ship. See, I mean, see, this is it, unlimited resources. You could just want your get your own yeah, ship. Exactly. That's what but I if you if you got your own ship, which what would you make it look like? <laughs> it wouldn't be a penis. The Enterprise. Yeah. There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so you're just Bill would build the, the ship that we all really wanted. Right. You just, you, okay. We're, okay, so... Yeah, fine. I just want the Enterprise, and I'll have the hollow deck room make my perfect D and D area. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. See, you said shoot the moon. I did. Right. I, I figured the thing had to exist in real life. Yeah. It <laughs> technically, it does. I think. Yeah, technically, it does. Well, <laughs> like, well, I mean, the hollow yeah. deck doesn't. No, but I mean, we could we could easily. Yeah, hop you could have a Jeff Bezos penis rocket. Spaceships. Yeah. Too That's what could, I do. If you had unlimited resources, you could build a non fully functional replica of the Enterprise somewhere in orbit. Yeah. I can right. hear. I, I can mean, hear it obviously bird. wouldn't have a working warp drive, but you could <laughs> make everything look like it was real. There you go. I mean, that'd be a cool version of an International Space Station. You just make I the new one look. Don't think we have the resources for that right now. <laughs> like I, I still think that's an actual impossibility. Yeah. Hey, don't poop microbe. on my parade. <laughs> uh, the micro meteorite that here, that decompresses the whole thing will uh, poop on your parade a whole lot more. Yeah, that's bad. That's, that's bad news. All right, let's jump down to Mr. Chris. Oh boy. Um, practical wise, um, it's it's difficult. So. Gina and I are the worst. We just kind of buy everything that we want all year when we want it. So kind of how Linda and I work. Really, it comes down to what haven't we bought yet that we could still use. So for me, it was um, uh, either a new golf bag or some grips for my clubs. Um, they've been getting a lot of play over the last year or so. Um, they're starting to wear out in some areas. It could use a little bit of maintenance, love, and care. So also some gardening tools like a hedge trimmer. Uh, some small things like that, just practical everyday things. Um, as far as anything goes, um, <clears throat> probably. Hmm, well, one thing I've been asking for since I was a kid, even before I could drive, was a car. I always ask for a car every year. So <laughs> even though I have a car, you know, I, I own yeah. my car and. And whatnot, but I always ask for one. So I always, every year, I generally get different types of 
either miniature cars like Hot Wheels or um, the little uh, remote control cars. I get those. <laughs> you can see one kind of like right here. It's a Ferrari uh, remote oh, yeah. control. Mm. Um, there's something else back there like that. somewhere too. Uh, they hate it, frankly, <laughs> but uh, it's great anyways. Uh, so yeah, any kind of car, probably supercar like a McLaren or something like that. Um, it's generally what I ask for that's kind of out there. Who knows? Maybe one year it'll happen. I'll just get like a, a clunker, like a five hundred dollar Honda Civic or something in the driveway. <laughs> and my mom will be like, "Here you go." Right. <laughs> nice. It doesn't run. You have to get. <laughs> you have to. It'd fix be an it interesting it. side project, then. Yeah. Yeah. And what about non-practical? Well, that's more or less my non-practical. Oh. Okay. Beyond that, though, probably, probably Bitcoin. Let's be real. <laughs> I'm in that camp. Even Probably after, Bitcoin. even after the whole uh, fiasco mm -hmm. with digital FTX food. and Sam yeah. Bankman-Fried, yeah. yeah, that's just called a dip. A, a dip. dip. <laughs> well, it's called a dip, all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that's a word that you can call uh, <laughs> the, the Freed guy. Yeah. He's a dip. So, uh, yeah, no, even after all that, all right. All right. Well, uh, my deal, um, I have asked Santa for a uh, 3D printer as well. Sweet. <laughs> uh, so this is the one I'm getting. Uh, they had a, it's uh, from Prusa 3D. They um, make the Prusa i3 M A 3 S plus. I don't know, longest name I've, I can never remember. Uh, but anyway, they had a Black Friday deal. You buy the printer and they throw in that lovely uh, case for it. Uh, that you see on the right there. So that's coming. It should be here Thursday, actually. It's already cleared wow. it's in uh, Cleveland. So it is on its route. So I'm pretty excited about that. Can't wait to start printing some stuff. And Can you do uh, multicolor um, with that? What's that? Can you do multicolor with that? Um, no, you can, but you have to buy an extra part. for. Uh, it's like 300, and it, that's the multi- material upgrade mmu some i don't know it's got some long acronym thing so um, but anyway yeah i might do that eventually um i just want to get kind of get the initial thing set up and uh test it with a filament get something under my belt first before i go much too too further overhead we should have yeah. he's been one a 3d printer for like Two, at least two years now. So, so I'm kind of surprised that, you don't have one yet. Like, yeah. yeah, I know. I well, I I almost did last year, and then I missed the Black Friday sale, and then I'm oh, like, okay. fuck, I missed the Black Friday sale. So, but then they announced uh, they were coming out with a brand new printer, an XL, which was larger, and I'm like, okay, well, maybe I'll get that. But then the XL printer didn't come out. It's only now starting to ship, and if you order one, you get in the queue, and you're like nine to ten months down the road you would get one and i'm like i'll just take advantage of this year's black friday deal get the their tried and tested um mk3 printer and i uh, get going with that and then that'll give them time to work out the bugs on the other one since it's only just now shipping this month so i'm sure they'll have some tweaks and stuff that they'll figure out they need to do and uh then my other thing uh, from Santa was the build out of my D&D uh, &D game room. So we used to have uh, uh, the other part of the basement down here was set up to be a podcast studio, but now we do everything digitally online via StreamYard. Thank you, StreamYard. So um, the uh, studio was just kind of sitting around, um, not really getting much use. So I thought, hmm, here we go. We'll, we'll convert it. So here's what it looks like now. So there's the, uh, the TV um, that I got to go with it. And uh, it uh, plays uh, digital maps and uh, all that good stuff. Now, Bill, the digital map, are we planning on using that during gameplay, too? Yes, Ooh. we are. And uh, well, I think it's about done here. 
So, ooh, ah. Yeah. That, that's a table that Matt Mercer would be jealous of. Really? <laughs> well, and that's just our right. podcast table. That's our old kitchen table. It just happened to have two leaves and ex to be able to expand that that much. So, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to be using the digital map. So we're going to use um, for for um, those that are thinking about getting into D&D and are interested in maybe going with the digital option. Um, so uh, there's a, a guy on uh, Patreon, has a Patreon and, and um, he has a business called Digital Dungeons and he creates all of these digital maps and um, has a software for it and basically you pull up the software and it, it has a bunch of different grids on it and then you can pull in these moving maps into the grid and set it up however you want and then you click you know the play button it casts it to the monitor on the table and so like in that scene that you just saw there um that was just like a um, gravel road that goes alongside a stream and you've got the flowing water and the shade from the trees is you know moving as the wind blows through the trees on the ground you can hear the birds chirping in the background so it's uh it's a fully kind of immersive thing and it's a top <clears throat> view, and it's got like a grid on it one inch grid so you can put your miniatures on there and then move them around as you play and uh then um for the actual combat mode stuff we're going to be using fantasy grounds and fantasy grounds um you basically create your character in fantasy grounds and um the dm can uh, create encounters for you and you can once the dm starts the encounter everybody rolls for initiative it automatically builds that all out on the screen and then the players can target which enemies they want to attack um roll to hit roll damage and the thing does all the calculating figures up nice. the figures up uh you know it'll uh, figure out you know if you got advantage on the hit or disadvantage and uh, all kinds of stuff based on your condition of your character so so is there going to be any kind of integration then between the digital map and fantasy grounds or is that just kind of going to be done separate where the combat happens in fantasy grounds but we play it out on right the screen right okay. it'll be separate so um i think chris what, what we're used to now with uh, when we play the game with benito is that He's got the map in Fantasy yeah. Grounds, and we're moving our characters there. That part will be missing from this. We'll do all of the character moving on that screen, yep. and then you'll just have a combat tracker up, and then on the combat tracker, you just do Control-Enter on the creature you want to attack. Yep, right, the target, and yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. So yeah. tracking it and then playing it out on the screen. Um, Yep. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see if there's any way to bridge those together in the future. I, I sent you a solution the other day in the Discord where oh. somebody had a way to export maps, and I'm wondering if those digital maps would work to import it into Fantasy Grounds with all the lighting effects and all that stuff intact. So that'll be something Maybe. to explore as we get into it. But yeah, um, yeah. Uh, it's an adapter thing, because then it also takes into account there's like the, the 50 because yours was a 55 inch screen yeah, right right yeah so there's like an overlay in this tool that you can use um that sits on top of the tv and it actually traces where the where the miniatures and movements are and move lighting effects and all that as you're playing which is pretty cool oh wow so, that would be cool um yeah so it'd be interesting to see if there's a way to potentially merge that um that would be something um i would invest and throw money at to uh to try out so i'll keep an eye on that and look through it but yeah because pretty... um all of the uh digital dungeons um files they're all just like mp4s um so you just download those from his site and you can pull them into any software okay I, yep i did find yeah. out though that uh, so he's got a couple of maps that are very um action-packed one's like a river chase scene so you get this rapidly flowing river down through the center of it yep and then alongside the edges are the banks of the river that are moving so you basically would put your boats or whatever on the screen oh nice and it would look like they were sailing down the water right um but uh that was <clears throat> far more digital content than my laptop's graphics card was comfortable with <laughs> <laughs> so it made for quite a choppy show so um linda i was showing linda and she goes so let me get this right you're gonna need a new pc now <laughs> yeah um, i was 
gonna say you got a D and D room and a three D printer, and all he's getting is a watch. <laughs> well, yeah. You owe another watch. Yeah, well, that's not all I got. Oh, <laughs> what? Oh, okay, that's just all I'm talking about. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So anyway, but we were talking when I started looking in at computers. The 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 only computer Lynn and I have only ever bought one computer in our lives. Yeah. In our lives. How? Yes. Because he works in because an Bill, IT department. Yeah. So. Where we get a lot of equipment from right. at some point. I right. work in IT and no one's ever just given me a computer. You're not working in the right place in IT. So. Right. right. You got to yeah. be in the uh, networking. I work on the hardware side because then every time they refresh laptops at work, then the old laptops are kind of up for grabs. So we've always gone that route. So we usually have. Um, they're not new. They're old. They're yeah, old. it's used hardware, but it's they're generally. So not angry. So angry. So, yeah, so the, the last uh, computer we bought was in, like, 1998. Oh, my gosh, the fact that he said started with 19. I know. Oh, 19, no, it was before that. It was a uh, Tandy, Radio Shack, Tandy. Holy hell. The Tandy. Tandy. The Tandog. The Tandog. 286 <laughs> computer with, like, DOS. Um, Tandy. Oh, my God. Yeah, I was, so, I was so excited when I got that computer. And that was before I really got too far into into it i was like a pbx manager out in uh, denver colorado at the time so but yeah the, take, takes me back quite a ways the old tan dog as we call oh, yeah. it so, our first computer. so we got a, a good one coming it should not have any problem running uh, uh mr dynamic dungeons um uh stuff, stuff. so so anyway, yeah, so a couple things. So my printer should be here on Thursday, and then I can start printing minis and hopefully have some for the game when we start up because we're starting January 4th. So Yep, that reminds me. Seth, I have a file to send you. We probably should talk about that after the podcast, Chris. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Well, um, let's see what else we, we've gone around the horn. Oh, I oh I didn't specify my uh, my if I had unlimited funds thing. If I didn't you one... just do that? <laughs> <laughs> I do want to hear what Bill would do without restraint. I'm oh. sure you know what you're asking. Yeah, I you would buy. Got to worst case scenario somehow, Chris. <laughs> I would buy Nevermore Academy, the house that when or the place that Wednesday oh. Adam is going to school in in the in the new episode. You, you mean the building that they yeah. put it in, or you want the actual Nevermore Academy? I want it to look like it does on TV. That oh okay, yeah yeah, that's what I want. I want it to be real, and then I would move in there, and then you know that uh, has, has who has watched Wednesday Adams? Yeah, you've watched it. Charles? Yeah, I've watched it. Okay. Uh, Chris, you haven't? Nope, not yet. Okay. Not well, yet. well, part of it is they've got a statue of Edgar Allan Poe in, yeah. in like down one hallway in kind of an alcove at the end. And if you walk up to him and you snap your fingers twice, um, he moves around and bird, bird. slides back and opens up a secret stairwell that goes down to a whole that, secret. That area. was that was really good how they did that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, the way they have it set up is it goes down to this big, big open circular room that's got library shelves all around it. But uh, and the whole time I'm watching it, I'm thinking that would be an an awesome place to play D and D. So. <laughs> Yeah, so that would be my uh, that would be my my ideal. That's what I'd spend money on. So nice. Yeah. So now now you guys have incentive to go check out the show just so you can see what my unlimited funds. Yeah, you'd have to take up the cello. Yes, <laughs> well, I can do that. <laughs> He's he sits up on the roof and plays the cello at night. He's got unlimited funds. He'll just hire somebody to do that. Ooh, there Maybe you go. Wednesday herself. Oh, go. that was great. That's yeah, to play the doors on the cello. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love I love the scene where uh the, there's one scene in the show midway through the series where uh she lights fire to the Well, fountain. yeah, they're in the they got this big uh, what they call outreach day where the people uh, the outcasts from Nevermore Academy go into the city with the normies 
they call them. And um, they uh, are dedicating this statue to Joseph Crackstone, who was one of the original pilgrims that helped build this town up. And um, Wednesday Adams starts having these visions and she goes back in kind of back in time and and sees through the eyes of one of her distant uh, ancestors who was around back then, who was uh, prosecute, persecuted by him for being a witch. And so she figures out what a complete asshole Joseph Crackstone was. <laughs> so, so basically it's this big statue of him and it's kind of this big fountain, right? And so she works with Thing, which for anyone who's seen the Adams Family, they know Thing is that little hand that crawls all over the place. <laughs> so she works with Thing and Thing fills the fountain with gasoline. <laughs> and then right in the middle of the de dedication, the thing lights a match and a fuse goes and <laughs> the place and it looks like just a giant inferno. And um, as uh, they're, they're playing this beautiful music to, you know, dedicate the statue. And then all of a sudden it goes up in flames and everybody starts screaming and running. And Wednesday Adams is sitting there with their cello playing this dramatic <laughs> score as everybody's running around. It was just freaking awesome so if you haven't seen wednesday adams you're missing a missing a real treat it's out on netflix free streaming if you got netflix so um check it out all right anybody any last uh christmas thoughts wishes desires world peace right into the war in ukraine Poor yeah you. contribute to help support the ukrainians if you can they're gonna have a tough winter yeah, I, I actually just did that. Oh, there is a, there right. is a, one of the there's a creator on uh, my mini factory, a company that are and, and he's based out of Ukraine. Oh. And he's done the, he, he just uh, opened up his second uh, fundraiser to support uh, the Ukrainians. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he gets literally hundreds of creators to donate models oh nice and uh yeah you you donate and you get all the models and for this one he's also made a couple uh, or he's made several uh several custom models that are uh ukrainians uh, or of ukrainian soldiers or oh, cool. uh, people who are have like become heroes over there. Nice. Nice. I want the model of Operator Starsky. We yeah. Watch, we watch him on YouTube all the time. Operator Starsky. Yeah. All right. Well, sounds good. Well, everybody, uh, we hope you have a great Christmas or whatever holiday you happen to celebrate this time of year. We hope you're enjoying it and having a good time and spending a lot of time with uh, loved ones and friends and um, enjoying what the season has to offer try to stay warm next week it's supposed to be a sub-zero cold when starting wednesday night Very high cold. of like minus six and wind chill in the negative 40s so uh if you're uh if you're not somewhere warm bundle up all right take care and we will see you next time bye bye <laughs>